like to take a moment to share with you a few things about my mother. She had a passion for life, for all plant life, animals, trees, flowers, shrubs, all eukaryotic life. We all share in that bond. She was persnickety. She was oriented <laughs> to detail. She carefully managed everything in her field of view, including <laughs> us. <laughs> There's a new age belief that you should just let everything grow and be as it may. Not our mother's belief. <laughs> as Alexander Pope said some 300 years ago, as the twig is bent, so shall the tree grow. She believed that strongly, and she had a strong impact on growing and nurturing children, including us. She understood the balance of nature versus nurture, and she didn't view that as a strong tension. Everyone who knew her has a pruning for watering story. She was famous for the pruning shears that were mentioned earlier. They weren't actually modern pruning shears as you would get at Home Depot. They were old, heavy scissors, and she kept them in the glove box of her car. And she <laughs> often kept them on her person. And she had no compunction about pruning or watering your flowers as she spoke to you. <laughs> And she had no compunction about stopping on the side of the road to give attention to the flowers or the plants that needed her attention. We learned early that deadheading interrupts seed production and prompts new growth. I saw my mother once pass a Phalaenopsis, a beautiful orchid that has uh, become a norm because it's so easy to grow and she was plucking the petals <coughs> past the prime, prompting the ones below, the buds below, to come into bloom. And I noted that because I was an orchid fan and I had a lot of orchids in her greenhouse and she actually knew that I had gone too far when I began cloning them. <laughs> <laughs> and she teased me about 25 years ago when I potted my first bonsai that I had taken her pruning instruction and gone way over the top. <laughs> she taught us so much about garden design, which I love to, to take into account. She taught me that, that gardens have rooms and that a well-designed garden will lure you around the corner to prompt your curiosity to go and find the next item. And I'm certain we'll see that here today. As we saw the jonquils last month, and I see them still here on the left side of the drive coming in, I'm reminded that she taught me very early that, of course, they're also known in these parts as daffodils, but in other parts of the country, they're known as daffodowndillies. Many people don't know that. But that the true proper genus name is amaryllis. And she taught us the proper names, the taxonomy, the phylogeny. She wanted us to learn the science of nature. And she was so proud that we had mandatory Latin in fourth, fifth, and sixth grade because it allowed us to understand the etymology, the words themselves. On cold nights, my mother would routinely, especially in February and March, as you had the early bud, she would go out on a cold night and she would put old quilts on her bedded azaleas and her beloved hydrangeas. And she saved many a plant in that fashion. But as kids, we had to endure the teasing of our friends who would come over and see these quilts around the yard <laughs> and think that we were a bit crazy. <laughs> She planted gorgeous roses along the curved quarter mile drive that led from our beautiful home to the large industrial plant that we lived adjacent to. And it provided a buffer, a transition from beauty to industry. But it was that industry that provided the prosperity that made for this gift. She was active in her garden club. She adored her garden club. She was an active participant in shows and competitions, she loved to gather from her garden, especially tulips, magnolias, 
and her beloved hydrangeas. She told me once of the importance of garden clubs as fraternal organizations for women throughout the South and the entire country. And I'll never forget once she mentioned that the Ladies' Garden Club of Charleston in the early 30s was the birthplace of the entire national historic movement in this country. While Alice Richards is gone, we are reminded, especially in and around Carrollton, Georgia, where we see amaryllis everywhere, which she planted. And now with this beautiful outdoor garden, which is really an outdoor classroom for children. We take great pride in her vision for moving down this path, and we enjoy thoroughly as kids supporting her vision with our gift, which has now been matched so thoroughly and gives us such excitement today. So I stand here today and say, don't be confounded by the dichotomy of nature versus nurture. I'm certain that as thousands and eventually millions of children walk through this garden, they will understand the nurture of nature. As our greatest taxonomist would have said, there's grandeur in this view of life.